All right, Marquez. Next story is something I've been seeing all over Twitter, all over Reddit. It just like feels like everybody's talking about, but I'm not a Tesla owner, so I need your help a little. Mm. Um, it seems like this new Tesla UI update is a lot of, first I was seeing some good for it, and now I've been seeing a lot of backlash about how hard it's kind of making things. Yeah. Um, did you get the upgrade for it or the update? So I do not have this update. Okay. But uh, I am in the advanced queue to get these updates. Okay. So I can explain. Um, first of all, there's there's Model 3s and Model Ys that have one touch screen in the middle. Yeah. And then there's Model S and Model X, which have one screen in the middle and a second screen behind the dashboard. Okay, that was my first question, actually, because the yes. older... But it's only Model S Plaid that has that one now, right? Or is Raven updated to that? All of them, all of the cars have been updated. Okay. However, this was already a problem in Model S Plaid and all the new Model S's and X's. Okay. And so Model 3's and older cars and Raven, which had the vertical screen, yeah. are all now getting, I think, slightly, I think it's pretty clear, slightly worse because of this update. Okay. So first of all, here's, here's what happened. You have a, in a normal car, <laughs> You just have a heat seat button. Yep. You just have one button. Yeah. You just press that, your heat starts to warm up, your seat warms up, you press it again, it turns off. Mm -hmm. In Model S previously, and in a lot of these cars, Model 3 previously, at the bottom of the screen, there was a seat button. So you sort of remembered where it was on the screen, and it's still one tap away. You tap it, yeah. your, heat, your seat heater starts going, you tap again, it's gone. So they've done this new update, which is cleaned up the bottom and put it all in this nice, neat little dock, and there's a bunch of different shortcuts in the dock, and they have all the HVAC controls hidden behind the temperature. Mm -hmm. And this has always been the case on Model S Plaid, so every time I wanted to heat my seat, I'd have to go hit the temperature, which oh. opens all the HVAC controls, then hit the seat, and then turn the heating on. So it was a couple clicks away. Okay. So I found that pretty annoying in that car, but I gotten used to it. But Model 3 owners have always still had that button right there. Yeah. That button just went away, and they got replaced with this update, which now makes them all like Model S Plaid, which means you go hit the temperature, hit your heat seater, and then turn it on. It's several taps away. So it's this weird update that just made it more difficult to do a lot of things mm -hmm. that I think most car owners expect to be extremely easy. Um, it's too f it's too many clicks to be muscle memory. I think that's, it. that's the real problem. Um, and I, I've had a bunch of small software complaints about the latest Model S for a while. Mm -hmm. One of them being, if I want to change fan speed, I have to go hit the temperature, and then at the top, there's like a slider, okay. and I have to like slide this like very small touchscreen slider manually in the middle of the screen. Mm -hmm. No way to do that without taking my eyes off the road. You could just map it to a button on the steering wheel. Yeah. It's not possible to do that. So things like that, um, you know, there used to not actually be any way to access viewing sentry mode footage. They added that with a software update, so at least they're thinking about making things better. Yeah, yeah. But this particular update for HVAC controls, universally Decides bad. Pretty Usually, much. yeah, you, you want things to be quickly accessible. Exactly. I mean, if you're adding a touchscreen, we kind of talked about this a little bit with the yoke steering wheel, where just, like, lack of buttons makes it harder to find things. And now you've gotten more used to it, but... Imagine now your yoke steering wheel where you've gotten used to the buttons and now they switch places yeah, on you. And exactly. like you can't really find exactly where those buttons are off. And yes, we can all look at the screen, but I hope everyone understands here that you probably shouldn't be looking at the screen when yep. you're driving a car. Um, and temperature is something we change while we drive the car. Heated seats are something we change while we drive the car. Quickly. Like, um, yeah, it seems, yeah, universally. Like I think Andy Sly said it takes six button presses to turn on his heated seat and get back to his regular like menu yeah that i think you can ridiculous yeah it's definitely too many so that's like that really highlights for me the upside and downside of like this new wave of cards that's coming out that are all very high tech and have a big huge oh this is gonna be a problem with everyone yeah yeah which is that number one upside yes they can be updated the performance gets better the buttons get nicer looking they get faster everything improves over time ideally with software updates but number two, the bad thing is sometimes they're going to make mistakes and make things worse. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those examples where I, I think they could roll it back and everyone would be really happy. But yeah, this is, uh, this is not great. On all the previous cars, by the way, they had all the buttons like locked. I could turn the heat seat around without yeah. looking. Even though it wasn't a physical button, mm -hmm. it was in the same place on the touchscreen every time. And so I'd get in my car and without even looking, I know right like two thirds over from the left side of the screen, I just press right there. My heat seater just turned on. Yeah. So 
It had a doc weird. on the bottom of it, pretty much, that had all the things. Like, I'm looking yeah. at it. I posted it in our doc. It has the old UI and kind of the new UI. Yeah. And, um, like, it's very clear. There's the seat button next to each of the climate trolls for driver and passenger. You've got, like, music, GPS, d- defroster. Is that now, like... I'm assuming that's a couple clicks away now. It, yeah, it has been on this on this car. Is for it a really? While. Yeah, that seems like a yeah. pain in the neck. All and of the HVAC controls are behind that one yeah. temperature button, so it's at least one click away before you start to change stuff. That seems like kind yeah. of a pain in the neck. Um, and then like the other thing I wrote is wipers. I know it has automatic wipers, but I'm I've never been in a car where the automatic wipers are perfect and always match exactly what I want to do. So yeah, like same. I feel like wipers on a stock would be awesome um obviously yeah. i don't mind the wipers as they are which is uh basically you turn oh, them wait. on okay and then you get a slider through the wheel on the steering wheel okay and you can slide them up or down based on speed now so what if let's just imagine you have that wheel on the side of your what is it default to on the side of your yoke uh when you turn it on you can just do a single wipe if you turn it on and scroll the wheel then you can go up to auto up to single Double, triple, or quadruple. So the wheel is always wiper, or do you you activate something, then use the wheel? You hit the windshield wiper button Mm -hmm. to get one wipe. Okay. And when you do that, the menu pops up. So if you want to keep them on, you scroll the wheel up to auto. Okay. Or up again to slow, and then up again to medium, and up again to fast. So what if you could do, like, press the temperature button, and now that wheel is activated for the next couple minutes of go up and down. That's exactly what it should do. It obviously still doesn't... Hit the seat thing. I think the seat should just be. Able, I I don't get why everyone just doesn't. I like the seat just next to the side of the seat by your like oh yeah. uh, seatbelt buckle. It's just like well press it on or like on the side of your door. That's yeah. always easy. I think this is a Tesla thing where oh, they want all possible input in the car to be computer controlled if you want, yeah. which means that there are literally no physical buttons in the car other than the windows, which you can still do with the computer, and the hazard button. Okay. Hazard so, button should always be a button. Hazard button <laughs> is a capacitive button, yes. but it's a button. Okay. Um, other than that, yeah, you know, typically you'd have like uh, your HVAC controls, your media playback, all that other sort of stuff would be physical in the car. All None of it in any Tesla is physical. It's always all been on the screen. Yeah. So that's the advantage and the disadvantage at the same time. I kind of miss, or I shouldn't say I miss, I don't have a Tesla or a lot of these new EVs are doing it, but like I 100% agree that so many cars like completely overdid it with all the buttons, especially when you look at some of these like crazy high class, like super luxury ones where there's like 50 buttons in the center dash they and everything crazy. or they like the that. center console. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then going the complete opposite and having almost no buttons. I don't know if I would like that very much. I feel like there are a couple things I would, I think I'll always like a dial for, um, volume. No, not even for volume. We, uh, my wheel volume is where I do everything. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, like on my steering wheel. Um, I think climate control dial is always something I'll enjoy. A physical heated seat is something I'll always enjoy. Mm-hmm. Is it? You still have physical locks and everything, correct? Uh, like locking the doors. No, it's on the touchscreen. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I've been in them plenty. I just like I guess when you're not the one doing the physical things over and over again, yeah. like all these things behind the touchscreen seem like a lot, like way too many things behind the touchscreen. Yeah, and to be fair, I think they've done a pretty good job of anticipating when certain things will be pressed and surfacing them as buttons, so your muscle memory can still be one press. So for example, if I bring the car to a stop and put my foot on the brake, there is no park gear selector, but the park button appears in the same exact corner every time, so I just put my foot on the brake, I come to zero, and I just hit that button. Mm -hmm. It just appears there, because that's where it's supposed to be. Um, a lot of stuff like that. So like opening and closing the doors when I pull up and like park the car, then all the lock controls slide out. So I can always lock and unlock from there. Otherwise I just get out. So a lot of the stuff that you anticipate, you start to learn that as muscle memory the same way every time and you get used to the way the car works. Mm -hmm. But then when you step back and think about it, you're like, yeah, that is kind of weird that like I shift into drive by sliding a touchscreen. That's kind of unusual (laughs) to get used to that. For sure. Um, if you had to like, I do think so when it was funny because when I first saw this come out, I saw some like Quinn mentioned that he really did enjoy the design of the new UI. But now Mm -hmm. now, like once people are driving it a little longer and seeing all that, if there was like a a middle ground here 
or like the updated version of what was it version is it version 10 that was the older one version 11 is the newer 11 one is new yeah so if there was a either upgraded version 10 what would you like to make that cleaner or how would you make the version 11 the same cleanness but more functional I really just think they should allow a little bit more control from the wheel. So actually in the last Model S, there was a menu button on the steering wheel. Okay. And that let you actually surprisingly easily go in and change a lot of different things on the wheel. So I'd hit the menu button and then it would go, oh, what would you like to control with the wheel? And I could go fan speed, volume, you know, whatever, temperature. And then I could select it with the wheel and then roll the wheel to adjust it. Yeah. So if I wanted to adjust fan speed, for example, I would hit menu, I'd scroll to fan speed, and then I'd scroll the wheel to change fan speed. So instead of fidgeting over here on the screen, yeah. I'm sort of still looking at the road, but I can do stuff on the steering wheel and feel like I'm still in complete control. And I think that's the way they should have kept it. The current wheel doesn't have a menu button. It just has wheels that go up and down and left and right. And then blinkers and and yeah. range of wiper and horn and stuff like that. So I just would like that menu button back and just let me be able to do more on the steering more wheel. On that. And now when you say all those things show up, is that on the directly in front of you, the right. screen in front of you? So like mm -hmm. if that were a Model 3, would that just come up maybe in like the top left-hand corner of the? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, I, I think that would be easy. I I love steering wheel steering wheel controls. I Yet yeah, mine has way too many of them. I don't use half of them. So I do think a dial or two that you can then, based on what you're pressing on the touchscreen, be able to then control with a dial. Because almost everything we're doing is up down. There's not a lot of like yep. need to go all over the place. So that yep. would be awesome. I think Tesla, I think this new model of refresh Model S is the first and only car I've ever driven that has not enough steering wheel controls. I think every other car I've ever driven has either just the right amount or too many. They always put a ton of buttons on the wheel, around the wheel, yeah. in the middle of the wheel that I'll never use, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the first car, even after Raven Model S had a nice steering wheel that I really got used to with the menu button, this one, just not enough control. So what about this? Ditch the yoke blinker buttons, add mm -hmm. back the stock, sure. give you your menu button back. Yeah, please. You, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can hire. No, you can't hire me. I like this job better, <laughs> Tesla. But, you know, there you go. Free. I think this all comes down to Elon's infamous all input is error philosophy, which is that eventually he, he doesn't want you to even have to press the buttons. Mm -hmm. You'll get in the car and it'll go, oh, he's cold and it'll just turn it up. Uh -huh. just, it'll just know every single one of those decisions. Theoretically, he believes it should be able to make it'll, for you. It will measure the temperature of your butt and know when it needs to be warmed up. Yeah. without you knowing. And I'll tell you what, if that were to actually work well in a dream world, I'd be very happy. But tech's not that good yet, so we're just sort of living through the beta phase of the car not quite knowing exactly what you want and getting it wrong often. Yeah, that's a good point. But I always want my butt warmer going at like 150 degrees, so it's like <laughs> scalding. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if they'll ever pre-program that in. All right, thanks for watching this clip. You are now free to play Two Truths and a Lie in the comments. Leave uh, three statements about yourself and the next person who sees your comment will reply which one is a lie. That's great engagement. They'll good figure job. it out. Yeah, good luck guys. I like that idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let's I might start. jump in and, yeah, I might jump in and play. I'll give uh, three things that are maybe all true. One of them is uh, I didn't tell anybody my middle name until I hit 10 million subscribers on YouTube. The second one is I was a single digit handicap golfer in junior golf until I was a college student. And then number three was I've never been skydiving. That one's easy. It's I cut it there so they don't, so they think I know.